How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our next topic, which is going to be editing VMware virtual machine settings. So I'll walk you through how you can actually make adjustments to the VM settings themselves before, after, or anything in between a VM is deployed. The cool thing about it is there are going to be times when you may need to make adjustments. So you need to know how to make those adjustments. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that through the vSphere host client and take a look at those details. How's it going everybody? In this video, we are going to talk about our next topic, which is going to be editing VM settings, which is something that uh, I think everybody should be familiar with and uh, on the capabilities. Now there are a number of settings that a virtual machine can be edited with. Some are going to be options that you can edit while the virtual machine is running and you've got users using it. Others, not so much. So if you were to come up here to edit the actions here, a lot of these things like power, now that we have VMware tools installed, you can take and play around with the power settings if you want. You can power it off, you can suspend it, basically put it to sleep. On the guest OS, we have the ability of basically sending anything we need to. We can restart the VM because we've got VMware tools installed, which will allow us to basically reach into the virtual machine even if we're not logged into the virtual machine and affect things. So this will be something that you'll see in the high availability when we get to clusters and stuff like that. We're talking about DRS and stuff like that where we can actually reach in and we can see if an application or a process is working correctly. VMware Tools allows us to do all kinds of really cool stuff. We have the ability of sna uh, taking a snapshot so if you decide you want to go and upgrade or do some sort of maintenance to a particular VM, maybe you have a, a development or a test environment and you've got, you know, your, uh, I used to do this a lot in production. I would take a couple of different VMs, we would deploy them in a test environment, and we would install applications on them and see how they would interact. And if something blew up on us, we were like, okay, well, we'd snapshot before we would install that update. And then if something blew up or, you know, we would make sure that if we were going to deploy something to a particular business unit, for example, we could, you know, if that particular business unit needed to use certain applications to do their job, and we went out and we did a, we'd snapshot before we would install some sort of update, regardless of what it was, and we would go and we'd test for a day or two make sure that everything's working correctly. And if, for whatever reason, things broke, we would be able to revert the snapshot. We'd be able to restore snapshot to a previous version. It would automatically delete any of the updates that were put into the VM. So it gave us a lot of flexibility. We can do auto start, where if you do auto start, means that you're gonna start the VM automatically when the host comes back to life. You know, if the underlying host dies for whatever reason, you can do an auto auto start. Matter of fact, one of my ESXi hosts that I run in my lab environment has a couple of VMs set up to do auto start out of the gate, specifically my call manager server. As soon as the, VM, the host comes online, so after a two minute wait time, then that VM spins up and I don't have to worry about trying to go power it on. Now, the settings, permissions, notes, rename, Again, permissions is what somebody can do to the VM. Edit notes, you, if you want to uh, edit the notes, you can edit the notes somehow, and you know, nothing's really there for us to, to do. But actions down here, if we wanted to edit settings, this is where, our, where you're going to do a lot of your operations settings. This is where the CPU is going to come into play. Let me go ahead and bring this down just a little bit so you guys can see everything. CPU, you can add memory, you can add hard disk. We don't have the hot add capability right now. As you can see, CPU hot plug. We can't add CPU when we're operational. We have to power the VM down in order for that to work. If we wanted to modify the amount of memory, we can't hot add memory. It's not available to do, so again, turned off. For hard disk space, we can add a hard drive right there. We can add a hard disk. And when you go and create a hard disk, you'll notice that 
this VM, this is our Linux VM, it says thick provision and lazy, lazily zeroed. So we're going to chew up all 60 gigs of hard drive space on this box, but we're only going to fill it up when we need to fill it up. So if I was to come down to, uh, not on this guy here, if we were to, yeah, it is on this box. Let's go here to this PC. No, sorry, it's, I'm, I need to go to the main box. Let me come over here to here, click inside of here, and then come down here to Workstation VMs, Bird Host 1. You can see that we've got, actually take that back. Um, we need to close this one out. That's not where I need to go. Back to here. If we were to, I'd have to navigate to the data store. But as data gets written to it, you would chew this up. So it says 16 gigs. The maximum size is 65, but we're not using anywhere near that. But if you wanted to change how the storage is written to the VM, you could do that by doing a thick, thin provision, which is what we did on the Windows PC. You can affect what they call storage I.O. control. So you can come in here and you can affect how many shares of resources the VM gets for the hard drive and how many IOPS per second the VM gets when it's doing it doing its job. So if you want to set the any of these other options are available too if you wanted to play around with them. If you want to add a USB controller, you can add a USB controller. If you wanted to install something on the device, you can actually set the host device. If you have a CD DVD drive that is physically installed in the ESXi host, the server itself. You can plug that in and you can go to host device and you can actually map it. If you were to extend this out, you can choose the, the CD-ROM drive, right? If it's there, we're, this is a virtual drive, but if there was another one, let's say you had a USB DVD drive, you could plug it in and then choose this from the controller location and where you're gonna meet, um, pull the data from, and then you can install from the virtual media that way. If you want to add a network adapter, you can add a network adapter. If you want to add another device, like for example, a C another CD DVD drive, an NVMe controller, USB controller. This particular device is actually powered off at the, or powered on at the moment, so serial port is not available. If you want to add a CD DVD drive, you could. Lots of really cool stuff when it comes to how the VM will operate. So these are just a few of the things that I recommend you be you get familiar with and playing around with. And then over here on VM options, we're gonna have the general options. We'll have the you know the name, where the uh, the VM config file, the location where it's stored. If you want to do remote console options, you can choose to do that as well. We're not using remote console at the moment. VMware Tools is installed, but if you wanted to play around with this, you could and all that good stuff that goes along with it. Power management, how do you want the device to do stuff when it wakes up in the morning? Boot options, do you want to boot to the BIOS? Well, you can uh, You can actually tell the computer, I want to reboot to, uh, when I re reload or reboot, I want you to boot to the BIOS. Underneath advanced, we have some options in here of where we can place the swap file and some other stuff. And then fiber channel, NPIV, we're not running Fiber Channel, but if we were, we could use MPIV, which I don't actually know what that is off the top of my head. I haven't spent a lot of time with Fiber Channel. So these are just some of the capabilities and options that are available to us when we talk about editing VM settings. So just be aware of them and uh, don't be afraid of them. Play around with them, see what they do, all that good stuff that goes along with that. So that is pretty much it for editing VM settings because right now we're at that point where if you want to play around with anything, sometimes you'll have to power down the VM in order for that to work, but just keep those things in mind that you do have the ability to do that. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.